red because it's little things. I don't know. It's white, yellow, and red that you associate with a chicken, right? So, red. <laughs> Welcome back to Ever Disney Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Ever Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about Chicken Little. Chicken Little is a 2005 animated theatrical release directed by Mark Dindall. Supervising animators include Mark Anthony Austin, Doug Bennett, Nick Ranieri, Jason Ryan, Tony Smead, and Dick Zondag. Edited by Dan Molina. Music by John Debney. And it's written by Steve Bensich, Ron J. Friedman, and Ron Anderson. It is based off the original fairy tale Henny Penny or Chicken Little. And it's got a thousand different versions through history, all centered around the same thing. A character says the sky is falling, even though it isn't. And it, through our traditions, means someone is being dramatic. The film stars Zach Braff as Chicken Little, Gary Marshall as Buck Block, Steve Zahn as Runt, and Joan Cusack as Abby. Mark Dindall had an idea that Holly Hunter would play a young chicken who had to go to summer camp to try and like ease her anxiety and repair her relationship with her fa father. And at camp, she discovers a nefarious plot that the counselors or counsel one of the counselors is planning against the town. And he ended up taking this to Eisner and Michael Eisner said, change the chick to a boy chicken because if boys are short, they get picked on. And at this time, the statistics say that girls will see a movie with a boy protagonist, but boys will not see a movie with a girl protagonist. And Mark Dindall later on said this was before Frozen came out and made a billion dollars. <sighs> Don't get me started. In 2003, David Stanton, Stanton took over feature animation and said the movie needed a whole new look and suggested that it become the boy tries to save his town from aliens in my opinion, a way worse plot than the original idea. <laughs> original idea sounds infinitely better than this, but okay. And then um, David Spade, uh, Matthew Broderick, and, and Matthew Broderick and Michael J. Fox were all considered for the role of Chicken Little. Uh, but Zach Braff in the audition ended up pitching his voice up a little bit to sound a little younger than that one over all the directors, Mark Dindall. Uh, and then as far as Abby, um, Madonna was considered, Jamie Lee Curtis, Sarah Jessica Parker, um, Jodie Foster, and Gina Davis were all considered, but Joan Cusack won because of her natural comedy. Michael Eisner put 50% of their 2D animation team through an 18 month course on 3D animation because he wanted to make moves and improvements after a bunch of their 2D animated films performed poorly. We're talking um, Emperor's New Groove, Atlantis, Treasure Planet, and Home on the Range, which fine I suppose and then Dindal really wanted to capture like the roundness of the characters that used to be like in the 1940s and 50s um, cartoons of Disney. This film had a 150 million dollar budget and made 314.4 million dollars in the box office has a 36 percent Rotten Tomatoes. Listen to this consensus. Expends more effort in the technical presentation than in crafting an original storyline. Oof. It has two video games, Chicken Little and Chicken Little Ace in action. It also had a canceled sequel. A direct video was planned, um, basically The Ugly Duckling, which the whole premise would be a love triangle between Chicken Little, Abby, and some other person. And Abby was gonna go through a whole makeover, which sounds like garbage. And it was canceled in 2006 when John Lasseter took over, thank God. Maybe I feel a little like burnt because of Valiant. Valiant's animation was so terrible and it was birds but I didn't think this looked as good as it could have. That could just be me. Like maybe I'm, I don't know. Like it wasn't terrible, but I just felt like it could have looked a lot better. I don't know. I, I wasn't crazy about the look of this. I feel like in any other scenario, I would be saying this soundtrack slapped. It had absolute bangers on it, which is true. They had a lot of songs that are like really iconic. It's the end of the world as we know it. Um, he sang We Are the Champions. There were just like a lot of songs in this that are iconic and really famous, but I just think they weren't right for this movie, or at least 
felt too much of a grab. I don't know, it just didn't feel right. And I don't know if it's because they didn't establish it well enough to be able to use those kinds of songs in this, or I just don't know. Sometimes the song felt like it was supposed to be like a ha ha, we are joking, look at this famous song being in this movie about a chicken and aliens. Um, and it never hit the mark for me. Um, also the cheetah girl singing a song in the credits I did not see coming. Um, but for me, while obviously the songs on their own are incredible, for this soundtrack, I think were the wrong choice. The different openings to set up this kind of like humor with like Once Upon a Time or the storybook or you know, whatever else, that was funny. So I was like, oh, what path are we going? It gave me very like happily never after vibes or like in Emperor's New Groove when they stop the film and he does like the circling and stuff. That was kind of the vibe I almost was feeling. And then they just didn't keep up the spirit of that in my opinion. They went from like this funny like, oh, how does every story start? No, let's do something different, blah, blah, blah. And then they went into like kind of a lot of like stupid humor, like him losing his pants and you know, I don't know, just a lot of physical like kind of dumb humor um, from that, which like not saying that the opening is like intelligent humor or anything like that. I don't know, it just wasn't the same vibe. And I was excited because you know, I've heard very mixed things. I've heard Chicken Little is terrible. I've heard Chicken Little is awful. But then I've heard people say, you know, it's not that bad. It's fine. It's entertaining. It's not the worst Disney movie. Whatever. There's also a parent death. They don't say... <sighs> this is where we're getting into icky territory because we don't see it. And they technically didn't say she died. But the dad says, you always knew what to say. It would be so much better if you were here. And I feel like if she left them, he wouldn't be saying. So I'm counting it and they bring it up again later and it's very much she died. So I'm counting it. Um, they do literally nothing to help me care about anything that's happening to these characters. The character I cared about the most was Abby because she was like really rooting for Chicken Little and his dad to like have a better relationship. And I was like, yes, Abby, I'm with you. Um, the f like semi like fat jokes toward Rund. Haha, <laughs> funny. Okay. Um, and then this story is so, it's an hour and a half. And so this is actually, it's an hour and 26 minutes. Lilo and Stitch 2 was an hour and 11 minutes. That movie made me cry. This movie, uh, by the end, I was like, what are we doing here? <laughs> like, I don't understand. So Lilo and Stitch 2 was able to do more with like 15 minutes less time than this movie, like couldn't even touch the surface. This starts with the scene where Chicken Little says the sky is falling because a piece of the sky hit him in the head underneath the acorn tree. And the whole point of this scene is to set up that like Chicken Little did this whole sky is falling and then everyone in the town like it makes a huge deal about him lying and do it, making such a big deal and making everyone be like in the emergency situation and all this kind of stuff. And then it's also supposed to establish that like his dad didn't have his back because his dad like just says, oh no, it must've been an acorn, ha ha ha. Um, but they don't, like he just goes, dad, no, like dad, why don't you believe me? And then like nothing else. And then it moves on to like the future and we're just supposed to be like, oh, the dad never believes him and that's really affected Chicken Little. And then the whole town has held on to this for such a long time that they're like doing billboards and making a movie about it. And I'm like, I find that hard to believe after Chicken Little doing it just the one time. I am kind of like, I feel like a better setup would have been if he had done it a couple times, kind of like Boy Cry Wolf situation. And then they would have been, you know, even more like, oh my God, this kid, we can't believe anything he says anymore. I don't know. It just, I don't know how to fix this. Go back to the original idea where it's a girl chicken going to camp, okay? Trying to help her anxiety and heal her relationship with her dad. That sounded way more interesting. That pitch, I'm in. This is like a chicken tries to save his town from aliens. What? <laughs> no, I'm okay. Um, and then like, there aren't a lot of moments for you to be like, holy crap. Buck, could you please listen to your child and have his back? He's not lying. 
There's not a lot of that, those moments at all. It happens right at the beginning. And then, like, Chicken Little does well at the baseball game. So then his dad is being really supportive. And then, like, the sky is falling moment happens again. And his dad isn't there for him. Which is fine, whatever. But that's not, I don't know. That's not enough. I, it just was really bad. So, so then, when they have this whole, like, you're never there for me moment. I was like, this feels so early. Even though the movie had, like probably 20 minutes left. I was like, we're so early in their like relationship of this that like, while I'm glad this conversation is happening, it feels so unmotivated. Like I, oof, like, I don't know. I just hated it. <sighs> and then Abby was like the best character all the way up until Chicken Little kisses her. And then after that, it's like she doesn't care that there's an alien invasion anymore because the boy she apparently likes, which we never see any, any inkling of between the two of them at all. Um, she's like all like, hey, 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 okay. And like doing things. And I hated that. Thought that was a terrible choice. Um, it's just horribly structured. I don't even know. Like, it's just bad. There's no fleshing out of the relationships in this story. They don't focus on anything like of real substance. I feel like like they're trying to, but the building blocks weren't there to get me there. You know what I mean? Like it's just absolutely not. And then insult to injury at the end, all the aliens are putting everyone back on, you know, earth or whatever we, wherever we are uh, in their town. And Foxy, this like little, like we're not supposed to like her for some reason, cause she's just like really good at her stuff gets like scrambled and it makes her very like girly and like ah. and they're like oh we'll, we'll fix her and Runt goes no she's perfect like this and the aliens go oh okay huh disgusting that's not funny that's gross that feels assaulty just so everyone knows um so I hated that that was like the cherry on top to make me like really hate this movie i was like this movie is garbage but i have no like i hate it or um you know whatever i was just like this movie's trash it could be so much better than it is um which is really unfortunate and then that little cherry on top you know little final push over the edge uh made me be like okay you know what trash uh, i hate it oh, gross no Wallace Shawn being the principal in this movie? When he's the principal in a goofy movie? Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me, Stacy. Principal Mazer? No? Okay. I feel like I've said most of this stuff, but the Indiana Jones clip right at the beginning. Okay. This is what I mean. Like they did the Indiana Jones clip and then all the songs that are like really famous songs. It just didn't work at all in this movie they were trying to be like haha funny no um and then a very small moment but the gym teacher having them play dodgeball he's like we need teams we're gonna do popular versus unpopular and then it's not like a lesson that anyone learns <laughs> like what <laughs> like what and then also kind of story related i wish i could have done this in the writing but the whole, like, like there's barely a resolution. Like, no one is like, hey, Chicken Little, sorry. You were right. Oh, my God. No, it's just like, Chicken Little saved us. Now he's a hero. Here's a movie about him that's incredibly inaccurate. Ugh. Terrible. I hate it. Um, yeah. I don't like this. This is really bad, you guys. Uh, I really wanted this to be, like, at least middle of the road decent and not as bad. As some people said, but <laughs> this is pretty trash. That's everything I have for Chicken Little. My final rating is four chickens out of 10. Our total movie count is, our parent death toll is, cry count is still the same. If you want to keep up with what movie watching when, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, you'll find out what movie watching when. I put up videos every Monday and Friday and sometimes Wednesday. Join Patreon, I got a tier starting at just $1 where you get a coupon code for merch every video a week early. Uh, cheers above that. You get daily trivia, weekly, um, random things, monthly podcasts, monthly postcards. Uh, you could video chat with me once a year. You could get free merch. You get signed merch. You could, like, there's a ton of things. Patreon requests. Okay? Head on over there. Uh, buy merch. This is OG, OG merch. This is my first piece of merch ever. 
I bought a new version of it. Go buy some. Until next time, comment, like, subscribe, and I'm not sure if you like you are, so you, and don't be buck about it. Don't be the entire town about it. Don't be chicken little about it. Don't be runt about it. Don't be like anyone in this movie about it. <laughs>